All right, next up we have Steve Kulov uh, giving a talk called Simulating Your KiCad Circuits with Various Spices. Uh, Steve Kulov typically know, or Steve is uh, an electrical engineer and business owner. In 2014, he co founded HD Retrovision, a company which designs and manufactures audio video equipment for retro video games and other retro technologies. His main area of expertise is in analog circuits, as well as all kinds of video signals, including both analog and digital, with FPGAs. He is well versed in spice circuit simulation and will be presenting a talk regarding this use with KiCad. Let's welcome him to the stage. Hello. So, uh, how many people have simula simulated any of their circuits before? Okay, cool. Mostly in school or after school? Okay, that's cool. Um, I started using simulation about let's say 2010, probably I learned in school, I had a professor who made us use it to design filters. And we used it pretty basically. And then after school, when I started making my own stuff, I kind of got in, really into it. And like nowadays, I, I consider my first proto build to be in, fully in the spice simulator. So uh, I've used it extensively uh, and I'm gonna, kind of go over a lot of the bare bones things on like what spice is and then we'll kind of move into the, the KiCad stuff in the second half. Uh, but uh, spice stands for simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis. Um, so I think they like spice better than spice or spuice. I think spuice sounds kind of cool. I don't, I don't know. Um, but the thing about, about SPICE is it, it simulates circuits at the physics level. So you can, you can simulate pretty much anything. And so even everything is analog at its core. Um, it's used in a lot of digital uh, types of simulations as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna start off in, uh, I think the second best operating system, Windows 7. Uh, uh, only second to Windows XP slash Windows 2000. Uh, the line to beat me up will start over there. Um, I am really good at Ken and Chun-Li, by the way, in Street Fighter, so you better watch yourself. Okay, so uh, the main SPICE program I really use, and I kind of want to start in here because it's easy to get a lot of concepts in cross, is uh, LT SPICE. Um, it was developed by Linear Technology uh, if you want to know more about the inner workings of it, uh, there's a really good episode. I don't know if you heard of the Amp Hour podcast, maybe? Uh, uh, there's a great episode with the creator, and he goes into the, the really fundamental details if you really like software programming and stuff like that. But uh, Spice was originally a, uh, a program written in Fortran in the 1970s at Berkeley, and it was open source, uh, but it's not you know, like a GPL type open source. So you can grab the source and then make your own changes. And here's LT Spice. <laughs> uh, it's, you can get it for free, but it's not open source. But still, it has some really nice things to get you started. And that's kind of what I really want to go over. Um, hold on. I'm going to have to do this because I'm going to be slouched while typing. OK, so uh, a typical nowadays Spice program really has three parts to it. So you got your main UI part where you're entering in data, and that's kind of what I'm gonna go over right now. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make something really quick. I don't really wanna get into um, like an instructional video how to use LT Spice. I just kinda wanna get stuff going here. So I'm just gonna draw like the most basic circuit ever, voltage divider. And I'm gonna give this a five volt value. 1K, 1K. Carl, did you lose me? Good job, Carl. We're counting on you. Um, okay, so I just made a basic voltage divider. Um, and now I want to simulate it. And so I entered in the data, and then now it's going to throw it over the spice engine, but that's a little hidden right now, but I'm still gonna 
I'll get, I'll get to it in a second. So um, there's different types of analyses you could do with SPICE. I'm just going to go to the most basic one, which is the DC operating point. It's just going to, basically what it's going to do in here is going to drive this 5 volts through here. And it's going to calculate all the node voltages and branch currents. So I'm going to do that. And I get an error. And I, I got, I did this on purpose uh, because this is very important. You need a ground on your schematic. It needs a reference point because the way SPICE works is it calculates everything in reference to the zero node, which is the ground node, the reference node. And it, it, it's going to make more sense later, especially when we get into KiCad. Um, so I'm going to put my, uh, my ground here to my negative supply. And now I'm going to rerun it. And so it, this basic operating point analysis, like I said, it gives me these node voltages um, and these currents through these components. And um, I don't know if you can, well, you can't see anything. But if you can see something up there, uh, there is, at the bottom left corner, if I hover my mouse over here, it says this is node N002, DC operating point 2.5 volts. If you put your cursor over the resistor, it gives you the current. And actually, a really nice thing LT Spice does, it gives you your uh, power dissipation. But you could also do the, probe these little points, and you can get uh, these little pop-up text boxes. So that's kind of nice. And so we kind of really quickly, just within LT Spice, got the three main parts of Spice. We entered in the data, and it parses it into a text file uh, called a netlist, the Spice netlist specifically. And then you run it into the Spice engine, and then it spits out the data. And now we're back annotating back onto the schematic all the data we got. So you can actually view this Spice netlist, and it's pretty basic here. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm just making sure I can, you can see stuff. Uh, so I got a voltage source uh, from node 1 to the, the 0 node. Uh, I got a, res a, res a resistor, a 1K, another resistor, a 1K specified. Got this op point analysis, the basic analysis. And this is that back annotation, that thing I was talking about. Let's uh, know it can parse the data back in to, um, to the UI so you can see stuff and do some cool things. Um, so, but these no numbers are kind of like, they're kind of cryptic. So you can, just like in any type of thing that has access to nets, you can uh, label your nets. And because now this is not 002 anymore, it's out. It needs me to rerun it. So now I got voltage of out is 2.5. And OK, things are kind of clearer now. Um, so is everybody cool with that so far? Does it make somewhat of sense? OK. Um, so what's happening in the SPICE engine is it's creating a circuit matrix and using linear algebra to solve it. And so with linear components, it's a really simple solution. You, there's numerical algorithms to solve matrices really quickly. Uh, but what happens when you uh, put a nonlinear device in? And this is where uh, the strength of SPICE really comes in, because now with, num with computing, you can use numerical methods to solve this problem. Because diode, you know, its, it's IV curve is not a straight line like a resistor. It's exponential. So it's not a linear equation anymore. And so what SPICE does when it so solves this for the voltage and the current, I'm just going to run it again so we get our answers. but it does something called Newton's method, which has been used for forever. And it's basically, it takes a guess, and it draws a line. It uses that for the next guess, and does it again. And it iterates through until it converges. And you're going to hear that term a lot if you're going to do a lot of spice stuff. It converges when the changes between the previous value are so minimal, it's approach, it assumes it finally approached the right value. And that's really what SPICE is doing underneath. It probably calculated this thing multiple times before it gave us this uh, 692.88 millivolts. Um, so uh, that's really where SPICE comes in. Uh, a nice thing with a lot of SPICE 
uh, built-in spice programs is they, they have built-in parts you can select. So, um, so I mean, I could pick this common small single diode, run it again. It's going to have some slightly different properties, so we'll get a slightly different answer. Uh, okay, so you know, there's the spice's main strength is with the semiconductors and. That's why they use it in the integrated circuits a lot, because it's all semiconductors. Uh, so you got your MOSFETs, your BG, BJTs, you got everything like that. But uh, this is just the boring op point analysis. So I'm going to move on to something else. This is the AC analysis. And this is what we're going to do is we're going to sweep frequencies across. Um, so I'm just going to do, let's see, one. Star frequency, one hertz to one gigahertz. And it's going to put another spice directive down. It's going to comment the old one out. Um, but I need to excite this with an AC type of uh, source. So that's what this comes in. So what this is going to do is going to have a DC bias of five, but it's going to run a sinusoid of amplitude one at every frequency from one hertz to one gigahertz. So let's do that really quick. And so, and let me just move this around. And I'm going to probe this output here. And as you see, uh, I'm down 3 dB at the output at 8 megahertz. And that's mainly due to the capacitance in the, in the diode. So it's important. To, the reason why I wanted to run through this is there's a pitfall with this AC analysis. It's a small signal analysis. What the SPICE program does is, based on your DC operating point, it'll replace this diode with a current source and a capacitor. Therefore, this circuit is only valid at that DC bias, and you should only assume it's valid within a small range of amplitudes, right? It's a small signal. So if you want to go large signal, you typically do really the, the most popular type of analysis is the transient analysis. And so let me, uh, let me go into transient. I'm just going to run it for, let's see, 1K sinusoid, uh, 3 milliseconds. And I'm going to, I need to excite it with a different type of, this is, that's where these come in. So I'm going to run a sinusoid. Of, this is only for small signal analysis. So I'm going to run a sinusoid. Uh, let's do let's do zero volts offset one amplitude. We'll put the same thing. We're just going to do it a little differently here. And so I'm going to probe my output. Here's my input. Ugh, it's always blue. I hate blue. Okay. I did it again. Shit. So as you can see. The, you get to see these small little features. And that, what the transient analysis is doing is, and this is why it takes the most power, the most time, is it's calculating that point uh, like we did with the operating point, but then it's calculating the next point, the next point in time, and there's a time step involved. So um, you can specify the time step. Let's assume it's one microsecond. So one microsecond, it does the whole Newton's method, and the next microsecond does the other Newton another iteration of Newton's method. But the nice thing about Newton's method is it could use the previous time's guess to get the new guess. So it doesn't take that long. It doesn't have to start from scratch every time. Once you get the operating point, then it goes through, and the rest of the analysis is much quicker. So uh, let's see. There, there's some other nice things that uh, this particular spice gets you. Um, you can do current, it's current through the diode. If you hold on Alt, you'll see a thermometer come up. So that means wattage. So all it does is really just multiply voltage and current. Again, it's blue. I'm sorry. It's just the default. It multiplies voltage and current. All right, so this is, when you, typically when you work in LTSpice, or this is how I do it, I do an entire design in LTSpice, and then I, um, tweak everything, get it all ready to go, and then I move everything over to the schematic and then the layout. So the holy grail is to be able to do everything within one program, right? So that's what 
I'm going to explore right now. So I'm going to load up KiCad. And so in KiCad, schema would be the UI. And then it uses a internal, a, a third-party library for the Spice engine called ng Spice. And um, actually, one small note, there's a tutorial on the forums to tell you how to upgrade ng Spice uh, because 5.0 or 5.1, it ships with an old version. And the problem with the old version is you need to give it a boot up directive. And this is all in the tutorials. So it's on the forums. You can Google it, the schema ng spice. But you need to put this ng behavior uh, equals ps. That, that, that means p spice compatibility. So if you're exporting or importing third party models, you need that enabled so it can read the syntax of the third-party models. And uh, most of everything that's third-party is going to be in PSPICE format. So that's just one small thing I wanted to know. So I'm just going to make a new project. Um, Kai Con, uh, Spice. I'm a slow typer. I'm sorry. I'm better with the mouse. That's what, I think I'm the only one who's using a mouse today. Um, okay, so, oh God, all right. So I am going to pretty much just duplicate what I did in LT Spice to kind of show you the differences, uh, the limitations and the uh, advantages, maybe with uh, KiCad. So there is a PSpice library that kind of has all sorts of just basic stuff, even has the zero node. Uh, but ng spice will also interpret g and d as the reference nodes, so you don't really have to use that. I'm just going to grab the v source here for a uh, for my voltage source, and then I'm going to just I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab the ground, and then I'm going to grab a resistor. Sorry, I'm I'm a noob at KiCad, so I'm. I apologize. Uh, what was that? One, one N, 40, one, 40. Yeah, let's use the W, why not? Okay. Right on. So, oh, dang it. I blew it. All right. Uh, what was this, 1K? Is 1K? Okay. Okay, so now we have to assign models to all of these. And so you hit E to edit. And right here you got this button, edit spice model. So it automatically kind of detected it was a source based on the V designator. Um, but let's just do the 5 volt, five volt uh, DC again. And then it populated all these spice fields for you. So spice primitive V, DC5, okay, great. So the thing with the resistor is it kind of automatically makes the spice model for you, or you could just go in and if it makes you feel better, you hit edit, it'll already populate, every, it's a resistor, 1K, and then it gets you all your fields. But even if you don't do that, by default, it puts it in the net list for you. Now here's what we gotta deal with now. We need a, a model library for this guy. And so I got one from diodesinc.com. And uh, uh, is that a question? I, I, uh, no, that, that's built into the symbol. It's red. If you connect through the parts like I did, you, it'll draw. It's an easier way to draw things. In here, ILT Spice supports the same type of drawing style. Um, so. I have a diode model I downloaded uh, right here. I'm going to copy it to my folder, to this one, right? It's easier when it's in your project folder. Uh, you'll see in a second. And it's spice model. OK, so it's like, I don't know what this is not a passive, not a source. I'm going to put you in the model tab. All right, so let's go. Let's load this guy up. It detected this dot model statement for this. And type diode, it already auto-detected all this stuff. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit OK. 
Um, and then it, it did all this stuff for me. But there was kind of one thing I overlooked, and I, since I'm, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> um, there is a problem with the way the pin names are for diodes in, in KiCad. So I'll show you really quickly. Uh, so what was this, 1 and 41, 48? So it, the anode is pin 2, and the cathode is pin 1. But if we look in the ng-spice manual, sorry if I'm going too fast, but um, the anode is pin 1 and the cathode is pin 2, so that's a problem. So it's not going to generate the netlist correctly, but um, there's this alternate node sequence. And so we're really going to flip the order of the pins. So the first thing in my list is pin 2, and the second thing in my list is pin 1, so I'm swapping those. You're going to have to do that for a lot of diodes, except for the one that's built just for simulation. Um, so let me annotate. Okay. And I'm just going to put that dot op here because I want to show something. And so we got this in, and then we need to access the Spice Engine and get data back from it. That's in the Tools Simulator. And so you got your little simulator here, and I'm going to hit Run Simulation, and if you notice, I get a bunch of errors. And that's kind of going to happen with Operating Point, actually, because the Spice Simulator and KiCad um, only supports AC, DC, sweep, transient. It does not support operating point, and that's unfortunate, but the, I'm sure that's going to be added soon. What you can do, and this is the only workaround I found, is you can go to the netlist thing, hit the spice tab, and you could put, you could push this out to LT Spice or another spice program. The only thing is this string can't have spaces, so I have to use the DOS version of program files, uh, if everybody's familiar with that. And so I ran it. The thing is, you don't get the back annotation, so you got to recognize these net names or um, so you know what's going on. Or you can lab relabel them in, in KiCad uh, before you push it over. So we can't do op analysis, but we can do the transient. So let's go here. Let's do transient. Let's do, uh, well, it's going to take too long. Let's just do, because it's just DC. It's just, so we run it. it. It doesn't really give you a good thing that it's done, but it's done. You could add signals now. Uh, so I could add the voltage of the diode like that. Or it's got this, uh, oh, like it, and then I got cursors too. But I could hit probe, and then I could probe it, and then it'll automatically add it to that list. Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, five minutes? Okay. Um, let me see if I could, I think I could squeeze this in. So I, I spent probably till 5 a.m. coming up with a circuit that I thought would be kind of cool. So hopefully it is. Um, let me load it up. So uh, I made this audio circuit because I kind of want to highlight some cool things that you can do here. Well, first of all, you can... These are TI op amps that I, I, I just picked for, um, for this really quick. Really quickly, this is 9-volt input, basic 7805. I don't know why people still use these. They're horribly inefficient, and, uh, but do whatever you want. Uh, I just thought it'd be easy. So um, RCA connector for audio in, RCA connector audio out. I'm making a DC uh, half, half rail reference here that I'm using here to amplify. This is an audio amplifier. It's an inverting amplifier if you're familiar with op amps and audio. So I loaded this model up I got from TI. This is a sub-circuit. It's different from a model. I can't really get into that now. Um, but you can Google what the differences are. But I have to do the alternate node sequence, right? Um, so uh, the node sequence is in the .lib file. It uh, doesn't really tell. It tells you up here, non-inverting, inverting, positive supply, negative supply, output. So that's kind of what I did here. I did one, three, five, two, four. One, three, five, two, four. So you got to reorganize that. You got to reshuffle those. So I got that. Did it for the other one. This one I got some random 7805 lib from 
some place online. I don't know if it's good, but... Um, and then yeah, I got, did some weird kind of tricks on the, everything else because I don't want to use that V source that's in the PSPICE library. I want to keep my schematic how it is for the final project and just add the SPICE stuff that'll just run when I want to run simulations, but it won't affect my actual real product in the end. And so I got the 9-volt input, and this was really just a header, two pins, and the nice thing about the two pins, I could make it think it's a voltage source by just telling it, hey, it's a voltage source and 9 volts. I don't have to shuffle any pins around because pin 1 is positive and pin 2 is negative uh, for a voltage source. And here with the RCA connector, I made it a sine wave source. So now I'm running a 10K sine wave in um, to test what's going on here. And then for my output, I'm, let's say I'm running into 10K resistive load. I, I, this thinks it's a resistor now. So I'm going to run this guy. Uh, let's see. 250, no, that's too much. 10 micro, 250 micro. All right. So let me probe my input, probe my output. And I forgot to hit run. That's important. Don't forget to hit run, by the way. Uh, otherwise, it will look like a fool on stage. All right. So probe the input, probe the output. So green is my input, and an inverting amplifier, uh, red is my output. Now, this is really what I wanted to show. This last button I didn't really use before. This is neat. This I, I don't think is in LT Spice, uh, as far as I know, but it's probably in other Spice programs. I'm not sure, but I could, let's say I want to tune this resistor, which is the feedback resistor. This sets the gain on the op amp. So let me hit tune. Uh, let me get rid of the uh, input. Um, and so I just got the output. And so I got this little slider here now. And so I'm going to slide it up and let go. And wait, was that the input or the output? Hold on. Let me try again. It's changing a little bit. No, that's not right. Hold on. <laughs> let me re reprobe this output. There we go. Oh, but it's blue. Let me try again. Let's see what color it gives me next. Yellow. Oh, that, eh, that's not, not bad. OK, so yeah, I started at 10K, right? Um, it's, I'm getting a convergence issue. So a uh, bad thing about models online, online, they sometimes have convergence problems. That's why I kind of wanted to. Um, let me start over here. One minute, okay, perfect. I'm just at the end. There we go. Probe the output. Purple, great. Okay, so we have our one volt sine wave just inverted. And I raised the, the feedback resistor, and you saw after a few seconds it reran the simulation and it got a different gain. So you could kind of tweak this. And um, that's a really cool feature. I like it, and uh, I think that's it. So let's end it. <laughs>